is over specific in the sense that in the in the the it says that the wolf eats the goat but the only the moral of the story and the only thing that matters is that the wolf wolf and the goat are not will not be left together in the absence of the shepherd it would equal will be equally fatal if the goat would eat the wolf that wouldn't change the rules of the game still they are not allowed to be together exactly the same thing it would be if uh, in his absence the cabbage would eat the goat that is if we have the goat it should not be the goat should not be left with either the wolf or the cabbage but the situation is to now totally symmetric in wolf and cabbage and we we just call him an alpha alpha the shepherd arrives with a goat and two alphas and the goat should not be left alone with an alpha and the fact that uh, the one is a goat uh, that the one alpha is a wolf and the other is, is a cabbage is totally irrelevant now uh, as soon as uh, we have this symmetric situation we don't need to distinguish between uh, the two alphas anymore. Now, uh, and he here we start. We start at the left-hand side with uh, two alphas and a goat. Now, the only thing you can do, can the shepherd can do, he cannot take an alpha with him. Sorry, uh, he cannot. He cannot go all by himself to the other side because then the only next move is undoing that. So he has to take at least something. He can take at most one thing. He cannot take an alpha because then an alpha and a goat would, would be left at the left shore. So the only thing he can do is to take the goat. So now the goat is here and the alpha squared are there. The only thing he, the, the only thing the, sh the shepherd can do is go back all by himself. Next thing, he has no choice. There are only uh, he he cannot go back empty again because then he would undo the previous move. So he has to take something with him. So he has to take the alpha, an alpha. Yeah. Now there are here a gamma and an alpha. And there is an alpha here. What does he has? What does he have to do on the trip back? He has no choice. He cannot leave these two. He cannot take the alpha because he would undo it. So he has to take the gamma, and the net effect is alpha. And now uh, the the goat and the alpha are there. Now now and now it's, it's very simple, of course. Because the next move is that you take an alpha, and then there's a gamma here, and there's an alpha squared. You go empty here, and you take the gum, take the goat, and you have gamma uh, goat. Why I make my goat Greek, I don't know. But <laughs> here we are. Notice that thanks to omitting the difference between the goat and the cabbage, our solution has become in you sorry the, the wolf and the cabbage uh, and in the introduction of the abstract concept of an alpha our solution has become unique not only has it become unique uh, it also has become symmetric you see goat to the right empty to the left alpha to the right goat to the left and you see that this situation is reproduced here and this situation is reproduced there. This symmetry is also only there provided you ignore the difference between the two alphas. First problem. Uh, all little Dutch children know this. Uh, it is even, there, there is even a Dutch saying. Uh, trying to spare simultaneously the goat and the cabbage. I mean, it's, we use it in having your cake and eat it.
but it's not not a well known problem in the United States, I guess. Did you did you know it? Oh, you knew. Okay, so some of you knew it. Okay. Um, now uh, here our solution was uh, essentially abstraction, ignoring differences that could be regarded as irrelevant. Uh, next step is um, another technique for uh, reducing case analysis, and that is when you are faced with a problem and something has to be done, and there might be all sorts of ways of achieving it, uh, make the problem harder impose more constraints on the solution. And, uh, instead of you allow yourself to walk, I mean, you have to, yeah? You do something difficult. Uh, now, the, the net effect of such additional constraints, well, I, either it can't be done at all anymore. You have made it impossible. Well, that's a pity. Uh, or, it's just possible, but only in one way. Now, uh, I would like to show you an example of that problem. Uh, this time, uh, at the left hand, there comes uh, come two couples. Uh, a wife and a husband. And there's also a lowercase couple, a wife and a husband. The little boat carries two persons at most, at least one if it's to cross the river. And the rules of the game are, I mean, this is a very sexist problem, but I can't help that. The rules of the game are that a woman, a wife, is not allowed in the company of the other husband unless her own husband is present as well. So yeah, those are the rules of the game. So disallowed stages, combinations are this pair, uh, W, H, and the other wife, that's not allowed either. And then the image, uh, W, H, and W, H, W. Those four situations are not allowed at either side of the, at either shore. Now, uh, you can ask yourself whether you can do this and, 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 and try all sorts of things. Uh, but one of the ways of making it harder and simplifying it, you say, well, I can avoid those four situations by a stronger, much simpler rule. And the simple rule is just keep the guys together. The guys remain together. Then none of these situations can ever emerge. So there you are. So another problem is how, how do we cross the uh, river if we keep the two guys together? However, that constraint is symmetric in the two, two husbands. To all intents and purposes, they could be the two copies of identical twins. But if we don't 